Hello and welcome to FPV Tips. I'm George and today we're having a look at the Emax Hawk 5. The Emax Hawk 5 was the quickest I've ever gone from opening a box with a pre-built quad to actually flying it. It took about 3 minutes of configuration on my radio and then another 3 minutes in beta flight and putting on props. The unboxing experience was pretty good, there was no damage on the box on the outside. On the inside we noticed a giant block of foam padding with cutouts for the quad, the spare props and a few other items that should really protect all the components during shipping, very cool packaging. In the box we get the Emax Hawk 5, 4 spare Avon Flow 5 props, we get a couple of uh, left hand circular polarized pagoda antennas and an SMA connector um, for the VTX. There is also a spare arm, um, as the frame is not unibody and the arms can be easily replaced if broken. And then finally there is a battery strap, zip ties and screws, as well as the joystick for the Foxier Micro Arrow V2 camera. The build quality of the Hawk 5 is pretty solid and the components are high quality too. Here's a list with the full specs. But we also haven't mentioned how much this drone costs. Currently you can snatch it up for about $250 and we will soon find out why that's very worth it. The Emax Hawk is quite light coming in at about 270 grams without battery. The frame is made of high quality aerospace grade carbon fiber and allows for swapping out arms in case you break one. You can mount the battery on the top plate or under the quad and there is also rubberized padding under the quad that provides extra grip in case uh, you decide to mount your battery there. The motors are the Emax branded LS2206 uh, 2300kV motors. Um, however, the real star of the show here is the um, Avon flow props, which are really, really aggressive. I hope you can see that. The flight controller is an Emax Magnum Omnibus F4 with OSD. The ESC is a 30 amp 4-in-1 BioHeli S capable of D-Shot 600. Um, the whole stack is soft mounted with rubber grommets for, for vibration dampening. And at the top of the stack we have the VTX and the receiver. Uh, mine came with the FR Sky XM Plus receiver as that's what I opted in for, but they have other options as well. The VTX is a 48 channel 5.8 GHz and can be switched between 25 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. You can change the channels with a button on the side. Um, to change the output power, press and hold the button for 10 seconds until you can see the extra dot on the small LED screen. And definitely bonus points for Emacs for the cutout on the top of the frame so that you could always see what channel you're flying on. The battery leads have a zip tie to reduce some of the potential impact or uh, pull tension. And there is also a capacitor soldered to the battery leads to soak up some of the unwanted voltage spikes. In the front side we have the uh, Foxier Micro Arrow V2 camera, hope you can see it well. The picture quality and the detail on it are truly great and the flying experience is pretty solid. However, I'm not sure if it's the camera tune, but I haven't been getting very good results um, late at night when the sun is low on the horizon. In particular when I fly with the sun behind me, um, the camera produces a gorgeous image but flying towards the sun leads to almost pitch black picture. Binding the Emax Hawk 5 is very straightforward. Take the props off and then remove the top plate of the frame in order to access the bind button on the FR Sky XM Plus if that's the receiver you got with it. In your radio, uh, create a new model. I'm using the x Lite here, but the process is nearly the same on most FR Sky radios. Um, you want to go to an empty slot and then long press the uh, menu button and then select create model to set up a new model. Navigate to the setup screen and go all the way down to the bind function. Once you're here, 
just activate binding and then plug in your quad while holding down the bind button next let's jump into the uh, mixer screen so we can set up a few switches that we can use i'll add some switches to channels 5 6 and 7 for bonus points while we're here you could also come um, come into the output screen and trim all of your channels so that whenever um, you move the stick you always get accurate results ideally what you would like to do is you want to have 1500 in the center 1000 at the minimum position and 2000 in the maximum position you can do that for each channel by uh, getting into the channel and going into the edit menu and then using the subtrim function and reducing the min and max values. You can use the number at the top right to monitor the value in real time so you could adjust it. I mentioned already the perfect tune, like literally my first flight experience from the first second, the pit tuning just clicked with me. Every row, every flip was spot on axis, very easy to perform. Amazing work there by Emacs. Um, in fact, here is some DVR footage from the maiden flight and my first time flying the quad. I'm simply in love with the tune out of the box. It's very impressive and a good tune is a really big deal. Getting high quality components is good. And having the quad tuned perfectly will definitely help people get in the sky and fly easier with less hassle and have a great experience at the same time. There's pretty much only one more thing we need to do before we head outside to fly this thing. Uh, we need to set up some modes in Betaflight. To do that, take off the props and then plug in the quad to your computer and open up Betaflight. Once here, we can head on over to the modes tab. And remember, we set up three switches connected respectively on channels 5, 6, and 7. Um, those correspond here to AUX1, AUX2, and AUX3. And you can always verify that by flipping your switches on your radio and watching these bar, bars move. We need to make sure that we have at least an arming switch. Uh, in my case, I'm using AUX1 for arming. Then I have angle mode set up on AUX2. I don't even use it, but I guess it's always good to have just in case. And finally, I have um, turtle mode here again on AUX2 at the high end. If you're reaching to fly at this point, we're good to go. Don't forget to hit the save button and definitely make sure that your fail safe is set up and working. In my radio, I have set up failsafe to no pulses. If we go over the configuration of the Max Hawk 5, we see that it indeed is set up. Uh, the motors are set up with D-Shot 600. Um, I like turning off motor stop. I actually like seeing my motors spinning up when I arm my quad. Um, the motor direction seems to be props in. This is common with most of my quads. The receiver is set to SBUS, it's a serial based receiver and we have RSSI um, output on channel 12. That allows us to have some telemetry with the XM plus receiver. Come into the receiver tab and then uh, specify AUX12 for the RSSI channel. When that's done, finally you come into the OSD tab and you enable RSSI. If you're curious about the stock pit tune on this um, quad, those are the default pits. I haven't adjusted anything. In my test, I flew mostly 13 milliamp hour 4S packs and a few 1500 milliamp hour 4S packs. I don't think there was a very big difference. However, I do prefer to fly it on the 1300 milliamp hour packs. Here is some footage from a sunny day. I think this is hands down the best quad I have flown to date. My custom build quad doesn't fall too short either, although it is probably a bit more cost effective, 
I'm not sure how I would, you know, calculate the value if I also calculate the time I put in it. Um, then again, I did enjoy building it, so there is that. But if you want to fly now, bind and fly quads are always a good option. The pit tune really clicked with me from the first pack. The quad was very snappy, real fast. It cuts the corners nicely and simply put, it just goes where you point it at. It definitely packs a punch and is really much fun to fly. I was very curious to what degree that really unique flight characteristic was because of the Avon props. So I went ahead and I did a test with these Gemfan Hurricane props. And kind of as expected, the quad flew nicely, but nowhere near as responsive or as snappy as the Avon flow props. I did feel like the power consumption was lower. I haven't measured, so that was mostly a gut feel and just monitoring the OSD. Because the Avon props could be a little bit power hungry. If you have a 3D printer, you should definitely check out Emacs Hawk 5 projects on Thingiverse. There are a bunch of different wall mounts as well as uh, pagoda antenna mounts. One thing that is very easy to do and I definitely recommend is to wrap some electric tape around the shrink tubes on the arms because those tend to get loose a little bit and then the props could actually snap your motor wires. And here is some sample footage shot with the Runcam 5. So in conclusion then, would I recommend the Emacs Hawk 5 to somebody who wants to get a new 5 inch quad? Yes, I actually would. This drone is a really good value for money. It hits a sweet spot around the $250 mark. It's not cheap, coming with parts you will change in a month, but it's also not way too expensive. It flies amazing and the tune is top notch. You can build something similar for less? Possibly. If you're not experienced with building quads and soldering, it might end up costing you more if you factor in all the expenses and issues. That literally happened to me on my first build. In my case, I'm fine with it because I wanted to learn how to build quads and I valued the experience. But was it hard? Yeah. Did it take a hell of a lot of time? Yeah. Did I have periods when I had nothing to fly last summer because of various issues? Yep. I guess my point is that sometimes it makes sense to buy a bind and fly quad and if you're looking for a 5 inch drone now, the Max Hawk 5 is a really good option. Happy flying.